I just got finished running to the very end of my driveway to scream at the top of my lungs. Why is this? There's a Billboard article that came out. Al Jorgensen and Paul Barker have apparently buried the hatchet and it's possible they're going to make new music together. Yeah, that's the headline, but you know the story. They're not going to tell you that unless, you know, they're going to actually make music together. I think they will. The fucking real ministry is back. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. I am... I love the fuck out of ministry. The, the real ministry, like, when those two are together. See, that's the thing. A lot of people are Al sycophants, and they're all like, Oh, ministry is just Al, the book club, this, the book club, that, blah, blah, blah. Fuck that shit. The real ministry was Hypoluxa and Hermes Pan. The, just like how Star Trek, it was about Kirk and Spock, not just Captain Kirk. Uh, you know, ministry was about Al and Paul. That's the way it should be, you know? They made, ministry made the best music when those two were together. And, you know, I like Surgical Meth Machine. I like Lead to Gold. I like the projects they did on their own. They're good on their own. But together, it's like burgers and bacon. Holy fucking shit. You know, these albums right here, Land of Rape and Honey. The Mind is a Terrible Thing to Taste. Uh, fucking Song 69, a lot of people love it. Filth Peg, this is my personal favorite. Some people don't like it, but they can fuck themselves. Um, dark Side of the Spoon, again, some people don't like it, but I think it's pretty cool. It's weird, it's dark. And Animos to Samana. Oh yeah, these are the albums that people remember. You know, these are the albums that people love from Ministry, the albums that built Ministry's legacy. You know, not this bullshit, this horse shit, and this dog shit. Nobody wants to listen to that fucking bullshit. You know, this right here, this changed people's lives. This changed the way people thought. You know, the music was so different for the time. And you gotta cut ministry a little slack. I mean, they created such innovative music that after a while, it's like, where are they gonna go? But it's not so much about that. It's more that, you know, there was more quality control. We had different people arguing with each other over how a certain part in a song was gonna go and how different samples were going to work with other samples. And it wasn't people just sitting around kissing Al's ass, making a ministry record around him, and just drinking beer the rest of the time. Nobody wants to listen to that damn shit. You know, even this album right here is pretty complex. I mean, it's an underrated album, don't get me wrong, but it's, it's complex. It's got all kinds of different layering and cool stuff going on, and... You know, with relapse, you you just can't say a whole lot about it. But enough of my ranting for now. I'm just I'm gonna read you the article a little bit. You know, just little snippets here and there. Ministry fans will likely be overjoyed to learn that Al and Paul are speaking again, and maybe more. We're actually talking about doing something in the very near future. So who knows what may pop up on the next Ministry album? That's really going to get the old school crowd going. I just got off the phone with him, in fact. Ooh. Jurgensen and Barker got back in touch thanks to Industrial Accident, the story of Wax Tracks Records, a documentary about Ministry's original label that's been making the festival rounds. Ooh. Yeah, I kind of figured that, you know, it might be that documentary might have been the catalyst for this because when I saw the trailer for it, I saw both of them in the trailer. So I was thinking, uh-oh, they're both being interviewed. Maybe this is a good way for uh, them to shake hands and be like, hey, uh, what you been up to, man? Hey, uh, remember all that shit that you said about me in this and that interview? I fucking miss you, man. <laughs> you know, stuff like that. And even more surprising was several months ago when uh, fucking Chris Connolly got on stage with them in Chicago saying, so what? I couldn't believe that shit. The amount of shit those two wrote about each other in their books. I'm amazed that anything Chris does is on Al's radar. Al says that even he's back in the picture, too. With these rock star biographies and autobiographies, you got to take a lot of what they say with a grain of salt. Because a lot of what they're saying, the drama, the dirty laundry air, and, you know, a lot of it's just to sell books. And people love reading drama. People love reading behind the scenes stuff. So a lot of these rock stars will lie and tell you different stories about how things actually were. He'll be like, oh yeah, the fucking book club, this book club, that. Paul Barker was an intellectual. He wasn't fun to be around. I erased 80% of whatever he contributed to the albums. Bullshit. Bullshit. 
If you're an objective fan, you realize this because, you know, fucking Paul, he wasn't in, he wasn't just in ministry. He was in Revolting Cox. He was in Lard. He helped Al produce a whole bunch of other albums. So, it's, you know, he couldn't have hated him that much. And as far as Connolly goes, same thing. He was also in Revolting Cox. So, you know, there's no way that they could have hated each other that much from the get-go. Whatever. Not talking about the books anymore. A lot of external factors, whether it be management, previous relationships, ex-wives, things like that, is what interfere with this partnership continuing. I think all barriers have just dissipated through the process of time and healing. I think there could really be something to this. Ah, very nice. Very nice. <sighs> See, here's the thing. I don't think that ministry died after Paul left. You know, the anti-George Bush trilogy, fucking Houses of the Mole, Rio Grande Blood, Last Soccer, I can tolerate them. They're, they're okay albums. Me being a metalhead, I can listen to them. Um, especially these two right here. But, you know, it's like after Paul left, the psychedelic side of ministry just kind of disappeared and it just went more of a hard direction because of Al. Um, this is the stuff that I like right here. Land of Raven Hunting, fucking. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna I'm gonna celebrate tomorrow because this this kind of affects a lot of people. Not not just me. The real fucking ministry is back. I was reading an interview with Al a few months ago saying, oh yeah, I don't want to work with Paul again. I love Paul and I support everything he does, but I don't want to work with him. Wait, you love him? Wow, that's the first nice thing you've said about him in over a decade. <laughs> well, this this is to me this is big. This is this is pretty big. In fact, I think I'm going to go out to breakfast tomorrow and celebrate. Yeah, over one of my favorite bands coming back in a way that I want to see it back. See, I was born in 1995. I didn't get to see Ministry in its original form, or well, it, not its original form, it was still just Al, but you know what I mean. The good lineup. I'm seeing Ministry uh, December 10th. They're coming to Asheville. Um, it'll be nice to, it'll be nice to see that. It'll be even cooler if they bring him or Connolly back on tour with them, which I don't think they're going to do that for this tour, but it'd be cool if they did. Um, I got to meet Paul a few months ago at, uh, the Lead to Gold and Ogre show over in Carborough. Both of them were gentlemen. Uh, Paul especially. He spoke to me for a good five minutes. Um, it was after the show. I I walked up to the merch table to buy one of the records, and I just I just talked to him. I asked him about his bass that he was playing on stage, and um, it was like one of those custom baritone guitars. It was pretty cool with sound. I, excuse me. And, uh, yeah, got a picture with him. Very nice guy. I'm hoping that in December I can give Al a five or grab a picture with him or say hi to him or something because, yeah, I love ministry. See this filth pig poster right here? Dark Side of the Spoon poster right here above my bed. So, as you can tell, I am very excited for this. And if I don't get off of this video very soon, I'm going to blow a massive load. And if I do that, the video is going to get taken down and I'm going to be a little upset. So, um, yeah, I'm very happy. I'm very happy. So, um, thank you for watching. See y'all.